Did you know that New York City is home to the world's first skyscraper? The Woolworth Building, completed in 1913, was indeed the tallest building in the world for 17 years. From the moment the Dutch settlers established New Amsterdam in the 17th century, the roots of architectural innovation were planted in what is now known as New York City. The Dutch brought with them a love for gabled roofs and brickwork, elements which can still be seen in some of the city's oldest buildings. As New Amsterdam gave way to British rule and became New York, the city's architecture began to reflect a blend of European influences, with Georgian and federal styles making their mark. But it was the introduction of the grid system in 1811, a revolutionary urban planning concept, that truly set the stage for the city's architectural future. The grid system laid out the city's streets in a neat checkerboard pattern, creating the framework for the city's rapid expansion. The 19th century brought a wave of technological advancements. With the development of steel frame construction, architects could now dream bigger, leading to the birth of the skyscraper. The Flatiron Building, completed in 1902, is a perfect example of this architectural revolution. Yet, it was the Woolworth Building that truly pushed the boundaries of what was possible. Towering over the city at 57 stories, this neo-Gothic masterpiece was the tallest building in the world upon its completion in 1913, a title it held for 17 years. Its ornate terracotta facade and grand lobby, dubbed the Cathedral of Commerce, embodied the spirit of the city in the early 20th century. But the Woolworth building was just the beginning. As the city grew, so did its architectural ambitions, leading to the birth of a new design era. This era, as we'll see in the next scene, would bring about some of the most iconic buildings in the history of architecture. Buildings that not only defined the skyline of New York City, but also left an indelible mark on the world of architecture. As the city grew, so did its architectural ambitions, leading to the birth of a new design era. Welcome to the golden age of skyscrapers, when New York City's skyline started to take its iconic shape. The early 20th century was a transformative period in the world of architecture, and New York was at the heart of it all. The Art Deco movement, characterized by its rich colors, bold geometric shapes and lavish ornamentation, was the star of this era, and it had a profound influence on the city's architecture. Its impact can be seen in a number of iconic structures that are integral to New York City's skyline. Take, for example, the Chrysler Building. Completed in the year 1930, this 1,046-foot-tall marvel was the world's tallest building, albeit for a brief moment. Its gleaming spire and terraced crown made it an instantly recognizable symbol of New York City. The building's sleek lines, coupled with its use of decorative metalwork, epitomized the Art Deco style. Then, there's the Empire State Building. Standing at a staggering 1,454 feet, this skyscraper claimed the title of the world's tallest structure when it was completed in 1931. It held on to this title for nearly 40 years. The Empire State Building, with its distinctive silhouette and step design, is another fantastic example of the Art Deco influence on New York architecture. These architectural marvels were not just about aesthetics, they were a testament to human ingenuity, pushing the boundaries of what was possible in construction and design. They transformed the skyline, making New York the city of skyscrapers, a title it proudly holds to this day. This era was not just about height and grandeur though. These buildings brought about a sense of community, pride and identity among New Yorkers. They stood as symbols of progress, ambition, and the indomitable spirit of the city. But as times changed, so did architectural trends, ushering in the era of modernism. In the mid-20th century, the world watched as New York City embraced the sleek, minimalist style of modernism. Stepping away from the opulent detailing of Art Deco, a new architectural style was beginning to make its mark on the city's skyline. This was the era of modernism, a time when architects sought to marry form and function in the most streamlined way possible. A time when less was more and simplicity was king. One of the first structures to embody this new aesthetic was the Seagram Building. Rising high on Park Avenue, this bronze-clad marvel was the brainchild of Ludwig Mies van der Rohe and Philip Johnson. Its clean lines and glass curtain walls were a refreshing departure from the ornate designs of the past. The Seagram building wasn't just a building, it was a statement, a sign that the city was ready to step into the future. Around the same time, 
Another architectural wonder was taking shape on the banks of the East River, the United Nations headquarters. Designed by an international team led by Wallace Harrison, this complex was a symbol of unity and cooperation. Its sleek rectangular design embodied the ideals of the modernist movement, simplicity, clarity, and efficiency. But modernism didn't just transform the city's skyline, it also changed the way people lived. New York City became a playground for architects who experimented with new designs and materials. The city's residential buildings too began to reflect the minimalist ethos of modernism. The influence of modernism is still evident in New York City's architecture today. From the iconic Guggenheim Museum to the towering One World Trade Center, the city's modernist legacy continues to shape its skyline. Yet amidst this concrete jungle a green oasis was born. Central Park, an architectural marvel in landscape design, stands as a testament to the city's commitment to creating spaces for its residents to breathe and relax. In the heart of the city that never sleeps, Central Park is a beacon of tranquility and a testament to the architectural genius of Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vose. Born out of the need for an urban escape in the mid-19th century, the park's design was no small feat. It was the product of a colossal undertaking that transformed a rocky swampy terrain into an urban oasis, a process that spanned almost two decades. Imagine the enormous scale of the project. Over 700 acres of land, stretching from 59th Street to 110th, painstakingly carved, shaped and molded. The result? A masterpiece of landscape architecture with rolling meadows, picturesque lakes and wooded trails, all framed by a stunning city skyline. Central Park is more than just a park. It is a living, breathing entity. It adapts and evolves with the city around it. Over the years, it has been home to a zoo, a reservoir, and even a castle. Each addition not only adds a new dimension to the park, but also reflects the shifting needs and tastes of New Yorkers. The design of Central Park marked a significant shift in urban planning. It was a bold statement that nature and urban life could coexist and flourish. It paved the way for the integration of green spaces into cityscapes and highlighted the importance of balance in urban development. Even today, Central Park continues to inspire and influence urban planning and design. Its success has sparked a global trend of integrating nature into urban environments, from the creation of garden cities in England to the birth of urban national parks in Japan. Central Park's enduring legacy is a reminder of the power of architecture to shape not only our cities, but also our experiences, our memories and our lives. It is a testament to the city's commitment to creating spaces that allow its residents to breathe, relax and connect with nature amidst the concrete jungle. As the city entered the 21st century, a new architectural trend began to take root. Enter the era of sustainable architecture, with the Hearst Tower leading the charge. As environmental concerns have grown in the 21st century, so too has the desire for sustainable and efficient designs in architecture. And in the heart of New York City, the Hearst Tower stands as a beacon of this eco-conscious movement. Constructed in 2006, this 46-story skyscraper was the city's first building to receive a gold rating from the Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design LEED. The Hearst Tower's innovative design is a triumph of form and function, showcasing how sustainability and aesthetics can coexist harmoniously in modern architecture. The tower's distinctive triangular framing, known as a diagrid system, not only gives the building its unique look, but also reduces the amount of steel required by about 20% compared to a conventional skyscraper. This approach illustrates how sustainability can be embedded right from the construction phase. But the commitment to eco-friendliness doesn't stop at the structure. The Hearst Tower also incorporates energy-efficient systems, like its ice storage tank that cools the building and reduces strain on the city's power grid, and rainwater collection systems that help meet the building's water needs. This architectural marvel also boasts a vast atrium filled with natural light, housing a thriving ecosystem of plants, further emphasizing its commitment to sustainability. Here the line between the built and natural environment blurs, creating a space that's not just environmentally friendly, but also a pleasant place for its occupants. The Hearst Tower is a testament to New York City's commitment to pioneering sustainable architecture. It's a shining example of how the city's architectural landscape continues to evolve, marrying the traditional with the innovative, the aesthetic with the eco-conscious, 
As we look to the future, we can only wonder, what will be the next architectural trend that will shape the Big Apple? As our architectural journey through the heart of New York City comes to a close, we hope you've been inspired by the stories etched into every brick and beam of this incredible metropolis. From the towering skyscrapers that kiss the sky, to the historic streets that whisper tales of yesteryears, New York's architecture is a testament to the city's ever-evolving spirit. But don't just stop there, join the conversation. We'd love to hear your thoughts, experiences, and what you found most fascinating about New York's architecture in the comments below. Your insights and stories make our community richer and more vibrant. And if you can't get enough of these architectural adventures, follow us. Stay connected with content with the Panda. Thank you for being an integral part of our journey today. We're excited to bring you along on our next adventure. Until then, keep exploring, keep wondering, and keep supporting content with the Panda. Safe travels, and we'll see you in the next video.